But it really feels like, this is just from my own experience, like that music is some kind of, it's like a bridge or a translator to other dimensional, unseen, unspeakable, non-dualistic spaces and meaning. And in those non-dualistic spaces, we can't just speak or draw a picture to explain them, right? We always try and you're like, I figured it out. And then you look at it later. And it's just a circle. And you're like, but that was the answer. And it <laughs> made total sense in meaning and feeling. It's about feeling. And, but, you know, you could play that a song in that space and it, it's helping you navigate and be in this kind of architecture of feeling and understanding. And then you come back into this three-dimensional space and you can listen to the same song, the same exact recording. And it still has a kind of meaning to you. And that's what I mean about it being a sort of like portal in a sense or, or a thread that you can follow. And that's very metaphysical or esoteric, but I've experienced it so many times that it feels like a deep kind of technology. Because then I start thinking like, why do we even have music or what is music? Or why does it elicit such an emotional response? And we take it for granted because it? it's so present in our lives. But it really, because it's so present, it really makes me wonder, like, what could we unlock here? And wow. maybe, I, As you're you know, talking too, I'm just allowing myself to think about, like, every meaningful experience, whether it, I, it actually made it into my book or not, included music. Every mm. single one. So even the Buddhist retreat that I went on included chanting every morning. That's what that's you do old as soon school, as you wake right? up. <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, and it's like producing, both producing and receiving sound, somehow, I get what you're saying, It like it, it goes through those layers. And people think I'm also a little bit, you know, when I talk about, um, I really don't mean this, I mean this in such fondness, but like functional psychosis, like you can experience something that if it was dysfunctional, you would be labeled psychotic or crazy or insane. But I think there are a lot of us who get really creative and are very connected into these other realms that we just learn to not talk about some of the psychotic stuff, right? Because it's like, we don't, we don't want to like scare people, but we can function. And so there are countless times when people who've died, experiences I've had, medicines I've never even ingested, but have just invoked their name by saying out loud, I would like to do this. Suddenly they are communicating with me through sound, through music. You know, you sound a wow. bit like a, an insane person when you say that. Like, what do you mean a song came on the radio and that was Iboga? I'm like, I don't know. That's just what it was. I don't know how to say it better than that. <laughs> it's it was like forms of synchronicity as ways of breaking through the spell of just like normality. That's it. So I was trying to explain to a very normal, lovely, intellectual, interested person about synchronicity. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I started to try to come up with examples and they're like, clearly not impressed. They're like, eh, coincidence. <laughs> eh, you were just looking for that. And I was like, all right, I don't have to convince you. You can stay brainwashed. It's like really not a big deal to me. Hmm. But to me, it feels like I got the opportunity to wake up through these little messages that got through the, the noise. You're touching on something here about synchronicity that I think is really interesting. It's like, it's a choice. Like, and and that's not good or bad. Like, you get to choose. Now, does that have meaning to me, that thing that's interesting that just happened? Or what do I want to choose to say it's pure coincidence has no meaning? And neither is right or wrong. But it's sort of like, look, one has a doorway to A, more fun, but <laughs> potentially the unknown. And and that's, I think, important to touch on is that these things are up to you and you can, you decide like if that's meaningful and some people don't, you know, my, I've had things, I think a lot of us have had things that have happened to us. It, it seems to be when you start to decide that these are meaningful, they happen in louder, more fantastical ways. Uh, and I've had instances where they get so loud there, if you didn't accept that gift of perfunctoriness or whatever it is, it's almost, you know, it's disrespect. It's rude. <laughs> it's like, wow, that was so crazy what just happened here. But even small things like my dad and I, I remember one time a rainbow was in the sky and I said, dad, 
look at that. That's just fucking nuts that that happens. That just happens. That's part of Earth. And he's like, yeah, yeah, the sun refracts in the refracts in the, the rain. And that's what, that's what he explained it. And I was like, what? explanation is not the same as justification or like, you know, right. And, and that's the way it is. And I love that that's part of the human experience though, too. Right. Because that to me is the soul's journey in a sense. It's like you get to choose and everybody graduates, but we have all the time in the world in a way. You know, it's like, <laughs> I it's love all good. 